Hi guys, here from Paxa Rubiana from Vienna here. I'm talking now about the question if uh, the Austrian People's Party should be expelled from the European People's Party. I worked myself as a young official some 20 years ago, also for SME Union and I know the EPP relatively well. I followed all the events since then and the trends are of course very worrying. You know that the EPP has expelled the Hungarians, uh, the Fidesz party, which was in some years ago a very good party, but they have moved into the right-wing populist and anti-European direction and they were excluded for that. And by the way, Orban sold out to Russia, he's a traitor. He has deserved it. And even if he has approved the flat tax, which was so important for me, I call him a traitor, a Russian asset. He should be removed from power and he is a really big problem and I'm very happy he is no longer in the EPP. The question is now, should the uh, Austrian People's Party follow his uh, direction or are they following? Should the EPP expel them? And of course it's a big thing to say because it's the party of Erhard Busseg and Alois Mock and Wolfgang Schüssel. But Wolfgang Schüssel is a good topic because he has taken the Orban's role in the relation and Schröder's role here in Austria. He is a Russian asset. He is the facilitator of money laundering, energy deals, um, Kurz uh, uh, visits to Putin and of course um, the of Nehammer going to Moscow. That is uh, basically Nehammer doesn't even know where Moscow lies. <laughs> it's all Wolfgang Schüssel who made uh, this both um, prime ministers and he is controlling the energy and the Russian policy of the Austrian People's Party and of the Austrian state via the People's Party. So that is a big problem. Additionally, uh, the situation is very clear that we have um, here a situation where the Austrian People's Party, especially under Kurz already, very pro-Russian, but also Nehammer, they are not ideologically on the center right wing parameters, let's call it. Yeah? I know that very well. I've written EDU party programs, EPP party programs contributed. I know very well what is center right. Yeah? They are protectionist um, in uh, the trade policy against any kind of free trade agreements. Uh, they have opposed, of course, Mercosur, TTIP and CEFTA and all these things. Yeah? It was a really very big problem. They are protectionist on the labor market. Uh, the Austrian labor market is uh, very, very restricted now under these last years. That is was very big problematic and it's hurting our economy. And it's uh, very much against what the market-based party should do. It's of course xenophobe on its citizenship. We have the third most restrictive citizenship law. Uh, I think only um, United Arab Emirates and Qatar or whatever, Kuwait are stricter in the uh, conditions to grant citizenship. And that's a um, total disaster. We are also on the energy. Since uh, Sebastian came to power and then uh, Nehammer is the same uh, line, uh, the Austrian uh, dependency on Russian gas has uh, from 60 to 80. They have even increased it despite the fact there was the war already since 2014. So that's a very logical sign that they are in the hands of Putin and they have opted for that side. They are working with the dark side. Also Nehammer is, for example, now hurting the Austrian state-owned energy company Verbund by claiming that was a mistake to partly privatize it. He is also now, his party in the south, in Carinthia, is promoting the nationalization of an um, uh, airport, <laughs> which is privatized. Yeah? And then they say it's not working enough because during Corona the numbers were lower. <laughs> and then they are making a big fuss out of that. So they are etatist, they want to, uh, to nationalize yeah? and for example uh, when it would be reasonable because I'm for example nationalizing out of strategic public security interest, I'm very much for nationalizing the Russian gas uh, storage system in Haidach which is on the German border, it's the biggest one, the Russians have emptied it on purpose under the watch of Sebastian and Karl because of their links with Russia and that was part of the war preparation strategy of Putin and uh, they have systematically the whole year 2022-21 uh, uh, li limited and lowered the gas storages in Germany and Austria, which are the biggest one in Europe. And then uh, they are uh, basically not filling it and now there is a law to uh, force them to do it. But uh, contrary to Germany, which have basically nationalized or put more or less under custody uh, the German assets of Gazprom, least some of them, uh, the Austrians have not done it because of course the links to Putin via Schüssel he would be upset and so he is basically not nationalizing the enemy's asset in Austria but he is um, proposing to nationalize the Austrian energy companies and airports. That's not center-right, that's um, Orban's populism.
He is also very much xenophobia and uh, anti-Islam and all these kind of things we claim not to be. And whenever we are Christian Democrats, I see myself as a Christian Democrat, liberal, market liberal, conservative, uh, in all these terms, I think that is what I always believed in and I will always believe in. But Mr. Nehammer is very much none of that. Yeah? He is a right-wing populist. Yeah? And that's the truth. He is uh, Fidesz. He is anti-market, he is anti-privatization, he is xenophobe and he is protectionist. Yeah? So what is their center right wing on that one? <laughs> there is nothing free market in him. There is nothing Christian in the terms that he is compassionate and open and uh, welcoming. He is the contrary to a welcoming uh, kind of culture and to any kind of openness agenda. He has done nothing for the Balkans. He has not allowed, and also before him, that was all always the line not to allow Romania in Schengen, not to allow Bulgaria in Schengen because of racism. And then now with the Western Balkans they always say they are friends. In reality they are only friends of Serbian President Vucic and of course because he is with Russia and he is with Orban. They have done nothing for Macedonia but only when Kurevsky was in power to block the border. <laughs> But for uh, now, and when it's the good guys uh, in power, they have done nothing for Macedonia, nothing for Albania, nothing for Kosovo. Still now, today, I have to uh, fight for visa liberalization. Actually, Kati made the fight, uh, the petition, it is going very well if you can sign it. So the Greens are much more pro-European, the Liberals are much more pro-European. And uh, the EPP party, Austrian People's Party, is no longer a pro-European party. They're not supporting any pro-European, not, not the debt package which is now needed, not the enlargement. They say they are for the Western Balkan enlargement, yeah, but that we know since 2003. <laughs> I mean, you cannot say that you are a really good European because you say something which since 20 years is already decided. Yeah? And every time the Austrians have unfortunately helped to postpone it because they were not able to build a coalition for openness and for inclusion of the Western Balkan countries up to now. Macron is dominating and they always are very much pro-Macron because uh, that's pro-Russian policy. And so what is actually center-right in uh, these uh, policies on trade, on taxation? They have cut a bit the taxation, but minimal. <laughs> they have not done any major economic reforms to my knowledge. Yeah? They have reduced some of the welfare things, but mainly for foreigners and some of them in EU incompatible manner. So basically depriving the Romanians and the Hungarians and Slovakians of the family benefits. That's also not center-right. That's right-wing populism. On Russia, they are obviously in the Russian camp. And then they do, of course, they have some compassion and organize some help, but nothing like in Poland, nothing like in Moldova, nothing like in Romania. They have done the necessary, what you can expect of a European Union country, because we are a normal working rich state. Yeah? We are not a, a broken disaster. <laughs> when there is a war in the neighborhood, of course, you need to help. But compared to how much we helped for the Bosnian case in uh, neighbor in need, it was called, and now in Ukraine, it's much less. <laughs> when you see also the relative wealth level of Austria compared to the 90s to now. Of course, they do the necessary, but they don't do more than that. And that one they don't do very convincingly, because many of the Ukrainians haven't got their money. There has many problems with the social care for them and with the access. And compared to other countries, Germany has included them in the social system. We still them, treat them in the refugee system. Yeah? I mean, <laughs> and you really wonder what's wrong. Uh, and the truth is that <clears throat> how it all happened, because in the uh, wake of the refugee crisis, which Putin started via attacking Syria when we lost the control of the world agenda and Obama was retiring America for a decade from the world agenda, Putin took over, he took the Syrian case and he destroyed Syria, pushed the refugees to us. And in the wake of that, of course, the FPÖ, the nationalists were very strong, riding high. And then the uh, analysis of the strategists around Schüssel and Kurz and uh, Nehammer, he was the secretary general of Kurz. Uh, so he, uh, they were all saying very clearly, we have to be the populist party of Austria. And they successfully contained it. That was respect for them, yeah, in a way. And they have then turned themselves into this right-wing populist party, which they are now. 
And I think I have conclusively outlined all the points. Yeah? Additionally, don't forget that Russian political funding for the 2017 election of Kurz, because he got so much money, where did he get it from? <laughs> you cannot get so much money in Austria, it's not available for politics. Yeah? Additionally, if you don't have any kind of extra access indirectly, and they of course will never be proven, but I'm not a fool. <laughs> I mean, of course the money comes indirectly via Putin, via the Sigi Wolf or Savas or Deripaska's channel. He gives uh, contracts in Russia to the businessmen who then funding. And so it all stays legal. And I don't say that anybody has done anything illegal because I don't want to be sued. But I'm not an idiot. I understand exactly how party financing works. Yeah? You get a contract in Russia for your company, absolutely fully legal, you, but you get it when the condition that you fund the political parties which you anyhow fund but then you can give a multiple of that money because you get a very lucrative uh, contract uh, in the energy sector in the mining sector whatever kind of licenses Putin can give or access to public resources Putin can give in terms of land energy or whatever kind of uh, business favors he can do to companies which are uh, well established Nobody can ever prove it under control corruption conditions because this um, businessman then successfully have already a history of friendship and for funding of the political parties. And then uh, they of course can give much more because they got a lot of money from Russia. And this money is tangible, it's very hard to prove and nothing illegally would done. So they are very smart to do that. But I'm not a fool to not to know that. And I can claim it because I know it's very true. And this is how it works uh, since generation, but especially since 2008 for the Populist Party and then since 2015 when the turn came, when the, uh, actually the Austrian People's Party is no longer a People's Party, a center right wing, but a right wing Populist Party and they got a lot of Russian funding. And why I'm so angry about this, not only because it's treason to Kosovo and to Ukraine, the countries I support, and to Europe and to Alois Mok and you know, Ehad Busek, the people they claim that they represent, but it's also that the Austrian People's Party gets the votes from Upper Austria, you know, from Steiermark, from Lower Austria, from the Christian uh, farming, worker, middle class population of Western Austria. This is how Austrian politics works. Yeah? You have Red Vienna, where I am. Most people here vote for the Red Greens liberals. And then you have uh, the, that's, uh, the division of Austria since century and whatever, 150 years. Yeah? Since the 1848, actually, yeah? since a long time. And then you have the rural population of Western Austria, mostly German speaking, mostly Catholic, and uh, then also mostly voting conservative. If I were the Christian Socialist, uh, Social Party before, not Socialist, but and then the People's Party since 45. And these people are absolutely against Russia. <laughs> No, nobody who is a Christian conservative or a Christian liberal in Western Austria has anything to do with Russia. They hate Russia. Most of them, many of them, they were either Christians, uh, and all of them are Christians, but they were in that kind of Christian anti and uh, um, Russian thinking and they were obviously also in the uh, line, many of them fled from the, the Soviet army towards Upper Austria for example, many of them uh, for whatever reason, but uh, nobody in this Christian uh, farming um, SMEs, middle class voters, wants uh, supporting of, of Russia. <laughs> It's just the elite who makes a lot of money and they explain that maybe, but most of these transactions are completely detached from the knowledge of the public. And they are told, ah, we need uh, gas and so, that's very good and it's cheap, yeah. But it's no more explained than that, that a lot of people make a lot of money with that, nobody explains them. And of course it's happening and of course it's very wrong. Because these voting segments are they're giving the votes to the um, People's Party in the perception that this party is somehow a good party, uh, which is representing their interest on the global scale as well, in European scale, because they're all Europeans, they're all pro-Europeans, they're all, of course, um, uh, much more interested in economic links with Germany, Italy and with America than with Russia. It's just an elite thing. And then, of course, uh, they are going to do this foreign policy on the, with the trust and the voter, uh, vote of the people from Western Austria, the Catholic conservative middle class voters who would nothing, have nothing to do with Russia. <laughs> but they will, are not explained. And so this is a total mis, uh, uh, whatever, 
um, it's absolutely a betraying the trust the voters have in the People's Party. And with that trust, they go and make these deals with Russia and make all this other policy, which is uh, absolutely against the interest of the Western Austrian middle class. And that's what I think is very wrong. <laughs> and so I call for more openness. I call for uh, politics of compassion. I call for a politics of reasonable, managed, regulated uh, openness, you know, based on trade agreements, obviously. I call not for extreme free market measures. Uh, of course, the flat tax is good. I still believe it's much fairer to tax uh, wealth than to tax income. And, and that is what we do in Austria. We don't tax uh, wealth, but we tax, uh, of course, mostly working income. And uh, that is uh, much better to uh, tax wealth uh, than to tax uh, working income uh, of employed people. And additionally, I'm calling as well for um, breaking with Russia on the trade and energy side. They are only funding the rearmament of Russia. Every billion we send is transformed in tanks and legitimacy for Putin. And that's not what Christian conservative middle class voters in Austria certainly don't want because they are good people. And so this is why I think the Austrian People's Party has transformed in a right-wing populist party. Their place is not in the EPP. That is, I think, absolutely clear. They have gone the Fidesz way, also with Nehammer now defending Orban at the summit. It's very clear. He wants to join whatever kind of faction with Fidesz together, like the confused uh, nationalist, um, whatever, um, protectionist, huh? pro-Putin. Maybe he wants to create a faction of pro-Putinists in the European Parliament. But with the EU and with the EPP and with uh, Busek, uh, Mock, uh, uh, with any of Monet, Schumann or with uh, uh, Helmut Kohl, this has nothing to do. <laughs> and this has nothing to do with center-right-wing politics. Yeah, there are also good people in the EPP and in the Volkspartei. I'm sorry if I offended them, but they are misled by Karl Nehammer and his onto Rush and Wolfgang Schüssel. He is the mastermind. Karl Nehammer really doesn't know what he's doing, but it's um, basically Wolfgang Schüssel who is steering, controlling this policy, having hijacked the international and Russian and energy politics of the Austrian People's Party and of uh, the, the Austrian state and the energy policy for 15 years now because he was angry that he lost 2006. Yeah, I was also angry, yeah, but I didn't vote for him because he was very arrogant. He lost already for his arrogance. He didn't want to reform anymore. And then he didn't have a job and he went to Russia via RWE and he got the contacts. And that's how it happened. And that's why Austria. Anyhow. This is the fact, and it also then reflects in the neutrality debate. Uh, in the, I've made many videos about that one, not to extend it too much. But the reason why we stay neutral when Sweden and Finland is uh, joining NATO, they were our partners in neutral Austria. They have now gone uh, to NATO, and we stay here because, of course, that's also Wolfgang Schüssel's influence. Yeah? Because the normal idea would be also that the EPP, together with NEOS, uh, the Liberals, would make a campaign for for NATO membership and then to explain the population and now the same way like Sweden with some uh, invitation from some American German friends we would easily swing the, uh, the opinion but no Russia is dominating Schüssel is dominating the affairs and so we are staying neutral it seems eh? and it's a major strategic historic mistake and only Putin is served by this because what's uh, really the problem with NATO when we are all in NATO <laughs> when even Sweden joins do we know something better than Sweden are we more for peace than Sweden <laughs> are we somehow uh, have you uh, superior insights <laughs> Uh, it's also even Orban is in NATO and he never said that he will leave. Yeah, so he's smart enough not to touch the cornerstones of his security and of his goodwill. So the Austrians stay neutral and basically offend the rest of uh, the NATO Europe that they know something better. They have, they can call Putin, hello Schüssel, it's your friend, and give us the gas. By the way, the gas, I made the case already, I explained that one. We have made in 2018 during sanctions, 
OMV is another big topic. Yeah? <laughs> there was, uh, there's so many topics I have to follow uh, in, during the sanctions. Uh, Sebastian Kurz, Weierschüssel, he got uh, two Siberian gas fields uh, for the Austrian state-owned company. It is the state-owned company OMV. Uh, and they got two Siberian gas fields. One they didn't close, they said they have returned it, but it was financially not feasible anymore. And the other one they still have. Yeah? And then they gave up the exploration in Romania and the gas field in, uh, uh, in Norway. So the deal was basically get more dependent on Russia and sell your European and NATO assets yeah, in Romania and in Norway. That, that was the deal. And additionally, it just came out now in 2018, they signed, when Putin came here for the 15 years, they signed a new contract with Gazprom until 2040, take or pay. That means every year Austrian taxpayers have to pay, and via the OMV and ultimately the taxpayer, has to fund um, 6 billion contract, 6 billion uh, euro contract uh, of Russian gas purchases, no matter how much we take and whatever. It was maybe in the, their way a good deal, <laughs> but it's of course a complete disaster because soon we will embargo gas and then it will be very uh, painful to justify why we have not, uh, we don't want to get out, uh, we want to get out of this contract. Anyhow, there could be force majeure and political risk, uh, but of course it is a scandalous thing because it was secret. How can the Austrian state company, which is 30% owned by the state, yeah, and it's of course highly regulated such big things, yeah, then they make a secret agreement with Gazprom for 6 billion euro yearly purchase agreement and nobody knows about it, only the former director told it now in the public television on Sunday. So that was also Schüssel's work and Sebastian or his instrument and of course Karl, he was also involved because he was the Minister of Interior and the Secretary General of the Basically, it's the same ideology and the same people who empower. It was just the face was replaced with Sebastian gone, but Karl is the same. It is even worse because his reflex are even less pro-market because he is very much a xenophobia protectionist and uh, pro-Russian in any of his things. And when he says he feels solidarity, yes, of course he has some heart and some solidarity. He sees it's popular to support Ukraine, but in reality he always is on the same balancing Tito-style kind of Bruno Kreisky tradition of the Austrian neutralist left pro-Russian philosophy and which I thought the EPP parties have not. Uh, but Austrian People's Party, unfortunately, has um, left the fold and is no longer in that chorus. There is, of course, good voters. Yeah? And some good people on many sides are there. Some of them are my friends. They will not forgive me this video. But uh, mostly <laughs> it's now gone uh, to Orban's uh, direction. And they should also form a common group in the European Parliament with Orban. And then the party must be divided, that's my conclusion here, into the normal um, Christian Democrats, uh, Liberals and Conservatives, and the Orbanist, uh, Pro-Putinists of uh, Nehama. And um, otherwise the party will go down and uh, they will not recover and the end will be uh, very, very sad in a similar way, like the Italian political the debate, or that will be, I think, the case. Yes, there is still hope, but not a lot. I call for changes and a new party leader, that would be the other way to really replace the man who anyhow doesn't like debates. I tweeted that he had already, that's another thing, he doesn't like political debates. Yeah? He is against debate about NATO, neutrality, gas, Russia, Ukraine in the EU. Actually, he is also against Ukraine in the EU. So he is absolutely against even debating these things. Yeah? And his party congress now recently he has made for two hours only. So imagine, then was him, uh, Sebastian Kurz and Wolfgang Schüssel talking, what I saw in the media, and that was it. Nothing more, and that was it. And all this with the Western Austrian voters, that's absolutely, completely unfair and I protest against that. Okay, good luck at the EPP Congress. Thanks a lot for watching. More to come and EPP, really investigate. All what I said is true and it's a big tragedy. Thanks a lot, bye.